Hello everybody and welcome to the channel on this very cold morning. My name is Dr. Marcus Mehta and today I'm going to be talking about my brand new TD5 Defender. This is my 2007 Keswick Green Land Rover Defender. It's a TD5 engine. So why did I go for a 2007 car and why the TD5? Well, basically the TD5 engine was discontinued in 2006, 2007, when Ford introduced their essentially Ford Transit engine to these cars and it became known as the Puma. Now, interestingly with this car, it's sprayed Keswick Green, which is a color that actually you only usually get on the Puma cars. So this was from, from factory, it was a Keswick Green, and that makes it quite an interesting car because it's a Puma color in a TD5. And I bought it about three months ago and I've done a few bits to it, which I'm gonna show you around in a minute. I'll show you some of the things that I've done to it since I've owned it and some of the things I'm looking to do. Everything I talk about, all the parts I'm talking about will be listed in the description below the video. Let's start with the back of the car. Now, originally this was a van back car. So it's actually had windows put in the sides, which I didn't do, but I did put the rear quarter windows in, which were by Maasai 4x4. Quite an easy job to do. Essentially just jigsawed the aluminium paneling out and cut the windows in, uh, which I think looks really, really good. Next up, we did a full stainless steel bolt replacement. So you can see all the hinges, which were taken off and resprayed. Full stainless steel Nakatenga bolt replacement, which you can see top, middle, bottom, and also at the bottom in the rear tub as well. And while we're down here, you can see the rear cross member looks pretty good actually. And these are one of the first things that goes on defenders. Now I've actually taken this back down to metal, rust proofed it and resprayed it. Uh, this was all um, products by Buzzweld and it looks, it looks really, really good. It looks, looks brand new essentially now, as you can see. Also fitted the towing bracket at the bottom and the electrics and also the, uh, the rear step too. On to the lighting, we've got all Bearmac LED lighting. This was all um, smoke LED uh, from Bearmac's website. Uh, really good product actually, works really well. And that's on as well, uh, the fog and the reverse light as well. Now the other thing lighting wise is the, um, the number plate light. Now essentially when you buy a Defender, when Defenders are new, they have quite a big block where the number plate light is. This is a much shorter version uh, that I bought online and it's LED, it's much brighter than the, than the usual. So the rear wheel is mounted straight to the rear door. I don't have a wheel carrier on at the moment. Now there is a risk that obviously will crack the frame of the door. That's something that happens to defenders. Uh, it's a monster 4x4 uh, wheel carrier that I've put on the back. At some point I will get um, a wheel carrier, but I haven't got round to doing that yet. Looking down the side of the car then, so what we've done is uh, sprayed all the wheel arches gloss black, which I think looks really, really good. And that matches uh, the roof as well, which is gloss uh, black too. So wheels and tyres. Now the wheels are standard Land Rover boost alloys that came on some of the Defenders. Uh, they've been sprayed black before I got the car. And then I put some Cooper Discoverer STT Pros on, uh, which I think give the car a much better stance than normal road tyres uh, and look a lot better. It's also before I owned the vehicle, had a two inch lift kit put on it, which you can see through there, the yellow uh, part. Moving on to the front before we go inside and look at the mess in there. Now we've got an RDX front grille on there, which looks really nice as well. Gloss black front uh, vents on the on the top there and same wheel arches gloss at the front obviously and you can see there closer these uh, chunky SCT Pro wheels. Now going to the front of the car a couple of things to note so on the uh, on this model the TD5 before it became the Puma they had a flat bonnet it's kind of a big giveaway when you see the ones that are produced after 2007 because they have a hump in the bonnet this obviously doesn't and with that they didn't ever have lettering actually on the front either I put this lettering on which is a, a you know lettering that you'd get on the newer models uh, the Puma cars but I think it looks really good on on this vehicle itself so I've placed it on there as well now front grille set this is a KBX front grille set and it's got a halo LED lights again, Bearmax smoke LEDs uh, for the indicators uh, and the side lights at the front. Now, one of the things that I did when I got this car was sprayed the wing mirror caps um, color coded. So these have been sprayed uh, Keswick Green 2, which I think just finishes them off. They're normally quite a dull black, the same as the wheel arches, and I think it just gives a much nicer finish to the vehicle itself. The sets are all stainless on here that we've replaced, um, which just, you know, just makes it look a lot nicer. These cars are so prone to rust uh, that this just stops that, including the bulkhead and um, vent pins as well have all been done stainless too. There's a few things that need doing around here. You can see windscreen seal. We've got a small amount of corrosion happening here on the front bulkhead that needs, uh, needs sorting. 
So moving into the back of the car, as I mentioned, this was a van back originally. Um, so it is all bare metal essentially in the back. Now the rear seats were fitted before I got the car. The Exmoor trim, they're really nice, hardly been used actually. Um, when you look here at the bottom, this was the uh, the door seal and the, and the sill. I replaced that with, um, with, a, with a new piece, which looks a lot better. Again, these bits rot like no tomorrow. So it's really good to get them uh, sorted. It just gives the whole back of the car a much fresher look. As well, all the hinges in the front, these are new hinges we put on here because these again rust quite badly uh, as water sits down the uh, down the pillars and also again you see new stainless bolts here i'm going to show you inside the car now um as you can see it's pretty stripped out it's pretty bare i've taken all the carpeting and lining out and actually started to sound deaden it and insulate it and this product is called silent coat a uh, brilliant product uh, you can buy online and i've placed it over all the metal paneling and i'm still working on that so it's still work in progress uh it had Exmoor trim seats in when I bought the car. I may be getting these re-trimmed. We'll see how things go. Um, it's got a Momo steering wheel because the steering in these cars is awful standard because the steering wheels are so big, you can't get your arm around to turn the wheel around. So these smaller wheels are much better. Apart from that, it's pretty standard. I haven't got a passenger seat in at the moment. Um, it, they're really, really basic inside, to be honest. Um, but that's exactly what they were designed like. It's got front headliner, but not a rear, which is a problem because obviously you get a lot of rattle from that in the back. And you can see now those uh, rear seats, the Exmoor trim rear seats. Again, that all needs panelling out in the back. But even then, your distance to the to the door is very close. So most of the time, you've got to have the window open so you can have your elbow hanging out the side like this. Um, really, really basic inside. It's even got an analogue clock in here. Um, there's no rev counter. It's just a speedo and the analogue clock there. It's got an aftermarket stereo in it, but again, you can get this as a double din replacement, which I may do at some point. Um, and someone else has put some light attachments in here, which I still haven't got around to doing them myself. As you can see inside, we're getting that silent coat done. Hair drive heating up the silent coat itself, sticking it all around this metal bodywork, which I think is gonna help deaden it, as you can hear that compared to, it's definitely sounding a little better, but we are still work in progress when it comes to that. So let's go for a drive, see what these things drive like. driving these cars they're definitely not the most comfortable car to drive they're bumpy they're noisy they're pretty cold on a morning like this morning um but actually there's something just about them they feel uh, there's something unique about the defender uh, but for me i just love the noise i love the whole road positioning of the defender there's something really special about this car even though it's arguably one of the worst cars to drive there's nothing quite like it and there will be nothing quite like it going forward with the launch of the new Defender this year. It's um, definitely a car that if you're interested in buying, um, now's the time to probably get one. There's plenty in the marketplace, but they're all going up in mileage. They're all slowly getting more wear and tear on the whole. And so getting a good mileage one now that you, that you look after and actually something you work on is probably a good time as any to buy one right now. So getting up to speed in these cars is not that easy. So if we get going on this road here, you can see that really probably talking at around 50 to 60 miles per hour you get to before actually it starts vibrating too much to go any quicker. Um, and to be honest, you wouldn't want to be going any quicker than 60 in this car. Um, they haven't got the best safety record, particularly with the roof. If these cars roll, they don't stand much chance. So a lot of people put external cages on them too. Uh, cosmetically looks better, but also uh, improves their safety massively. So this isn't a car you want to be commuting in. This is very much a car that you want to have as your secondary car really more than anything. I wouldn't really want to use this as my daily driver in the condition it's in. I might change my mind once it's sound deadened and insulated, but at the moment, it's definitely a, a short journey car, let's say questions that people always ask about defenders is are they a good investment now i think it really depends on what kind of car you're buying what model you're buying in a defender and also all the things you want to look out for when you do when you are buying a car like this they're often often prone to corrosion rust people lie about their history and what they've had done to them it's really important to try and get a clean example now this car itself was bought off um Actually, a guy that worked for Land Rover had a really good history to it. It's only done about 70,000 miles, which is not very many for this model car. It's a bit of an unusual spec, as I mentioned at the start, being the color that it is and the model that it is. And that's why I particularly chose this car itself. I will be doing a video about buying a Defender coming up uh, in regards to things to look out for and what you want to be 
doing when you're buying one. Now, I think as far as investments go, they can be a good investment in the sense of they do go up in value depending on which one you're buying. Uh, as far as cars go under £20,000, it's probably not a better car right now to buy, particularly with the new Defender that's just come out. The price of these are slowly creeping up, particularly the right model and the right spec. Thanks for watching my video. If you've got any suggestions, please drop them in the comments below. Remember to subscribe and please follow me on Instagram as well. I'll be doing more content with this car as we go, adding new parts to it and basically talking about some of the things that I found more challenging when I was buying a new TD5 Defender.